So as you know, or maybe you you don't know, Yelp is now uh, deciding that they are going to start highlighting any business that has been accused of racism. Isn't that great? So thank you, Yelp. We can certainly trust you now to get the truth. This is the cancel culture that we're living in. And if you don't toe the line, you're in trouble. Our kids now are being taught critical race theory, which means that you are inherently racist. You owned a slave even if you didn't own a slave. You wanted to own a slave. I believe that all men are created equal. I believe that no one should be held accountable for what their ancestors did. But that's not what the left is doing. That is not what the the Democrats and Joe Biden uh, and Harris are campaigning on. And everyone is too comfortable in the Democratic Party with this cancel culture. The entire country is canceled now because of our history. The founders should be canceled, rip their statues down. They ripped more statues down in Portland over the weekend. Change the names of buildings and signs and don't get anybody started on Mount Rushmore. This bleeds into your personal history. Redemption no longer means anything. A pivot point, life-changing, a switch in thinking or behavior. It counts for nothing with the left. This means a tweet someone might have sent when they were a child is worth cancellation. Some major breaking news for you. None of this seems to apply when it's one of their own. Governor Northam had a photo of him either in blackface or a Klan outfit. He's never been asked to uh, say which one he was. Why wasn't he canceled? Jimmy Kimmel used to think blackface was hysterical. His Carl Malone segment was a staple of his show. Why wasn't he held accountable to the same standard they held for Megyn Kelly, who, by the way, wasn't in blackface, merely asked a question about people who dress in blackface to honor someone they admire. She was canceled. But Kimmel, who dressed in blackface in a segment after segment after segment after segment, making fun of a black man, he never took a hit. Joe Biden is another great example. Here's a man who worked with segregationists. Somehow or another, he's exempt of cancellation. His crime bill is the exact opposite of the what, what the left is now proposing. How many black Americans were sent to prison because of that law? Again, I ask, why is he exempt? How can Joe Biden look at black people in the face and tell them that they aren't really black if they don't vote for him? Would you be allowed to get away with that? Now, maybe Biden's immune from the left's cancer culture rage due to his strong family background. You know, the left went after Trump's family history and viciously knocked his roots. New York Times went after the family's business dealings, going back to his father. The media has gone after his children despite no criminal activity, which I can't say the same for Hunter Biden. And the attacks even include the president's youngest child, Barron. I, re- I remember John Oliver going after Trump's ancestral name, make Donald Trump Donald Trump again. That episode broke records in viewerships at HBO. Going back into a candidate or a political's ancestral tree is clearly important to the left. So I guess that's why Joe Biden is so insulated. You know, a lot of people have looked at Joe Biden's family tree, but they focus on his mother's side of the family. Good, hardworking Irish ancestry. Lunchbox Joe, who comes from a long line of blue-collar coal miners. But what about Biden's father's ancestral line? Why has nobody looked into that? I mean, wouldn't it be good to further build that blue-collar Lunchbox Joe image? And Biden's very par- proud of that part of his family. You know his middle name, Biden or Robinette, Joseph Robinette Biden. Yeah, I've always looked at that and went, Robinette, what the hell is that kind of name? That's his father's line. He's very, very proud of the Robinette line in his ancestry. Hmm, Robinette. Well, if John Oliver and the rest of the mainstream media can go after Donald Trump's family and lineage, I guess the gloves come off. 
I've recently been given Joe Biden's family history from his father's side, and it comes to me from one of the finest and most respected genealogy firms in the country. Celebrities, elected officials have used this firm for years to reveal their family history. I'm not going to tell you the name of the of the uh, organization. I'm making the documents available, but I'm not going to print the uh, name of the organization for their own safety reasons. Now, why would that be? We have the full report. It's available now at glenbeck.com. And this kind of report is worth thousands of dollars to produce. It takes hundreds of man hours to research documents that go back to this case into the 1700s. It costs thousands of dollars. This report goes back six generations in uh, Joe Robinette Biden's family tree. Do we have the graphic here? If you're watching Blaze TV, you can see the chart. There it is of six generation of Biden's family, starting with generation one, the current candidate for president, Joe Robinette Biden, Jr. Generation two, Joe's father, Joe Robinette Biden, Sr., and on and on to Generation 6, starting in the 1700s, Jesse Robinette, who was born in Maryland in 1776. Wow, what a, what a great thing to have, huh? Now, here's where it gets dicey. Let me show you the next document. This is from the U.S. Federal Census in 1820. Ninth up from the bottom list as the head of the household, Jesse Robinette, as in Joe Robinette Biden. This is Joe Biden's great, great, great grandfather. Now, the left side of the form is the count of Jesse's family. But the right side shows something else. How many did Joseph Biden at uh, Biden's family? How many slaves did they own? Well, Joe Biden's great, great, great grandfather owned 12 slaves in 1820, five male slaves ages 14 to 25, two male slaves ages 26 to 44, three female slaves ages 0 to 13, one female slave aged 14 to 25, and one female slave aged 45 plus. Now, according to this report, again, from a very respected genealogy firm that is trusted by both famous celebrities and politicians, Joe Biden's ancestors were slave owners. Now, with that little chunk of information, it kind of puts Joe's work with segregationists in a whole different context now, doesn't it? It adds a little more weight when Joe tells black people that they aren't black unless they vote for him. I can almost hear the crack of the whip. It makes the remark that he made uh, just a few years ago, they're going to put all of you back in chains, a little more grotesque, seeing it was his family that put people in chains. It makes it all the more sickening when last week he said, a black woman was stocking the shelves while he was safe in his basement. It's weird that nobody has ever really dug this far into Biden's father's side or family. Or did they and just not want this to get out? Now, after knowing this, and if you work at the altar of cancel culture and societal justice, can you still be calling for the destruction of statues and monuments and still vote for Joe Robinette Biden? After all, his family was there. And they own slaves, just like Thomas Jefferson, who must now be destroyed. Hmm. Can you still vote for Joe Biden? Can you do it? I'm just curious. I don't know. I don't make the rules. If you call the America of today an evil country based off its past, then what does that make Joe Biden? Me, I think Joe Biden is unfit to be president based off him, you know, being one of, if not the most corrupt politicians in history. I personally don't think the sins of his family tree mean anything at all to the man of today. But that's not how today's modern left operates now, is it? I mean, I'm just going by their rules. (laughs) And if you go by their rules, Joe Biden should be canceled. And if that's not enough... Well, maybe then when they see the next document, it might convince them for good. 
If you're watching Blaze TV or if you go to glennbeck.com, you will see the second document, along with all of the documents. Now, this might be one of the most heartbreaking letters I've ever seen. This is a probate document from the state of Maryland in 1832, and it shows the distribution of Joe Biden's great-great-grandfather's slaves to his surviving family. You see, (laughs) well, unlike George Washington, Joe Biden's great-great-great-grandfather, he didn't free the slaves upon the death of Jesse Robinette. Nope. Joe Robinette Biden's great-great-great-grandfather passed his slaves on after his death to the family. And remember, this is 1832. George Washington freed his slaves in the 1700s. This document cruelly and methodically explains how each member of the family would become the new master of Jesse's slaves. There's Dorcas Robinette, who was given a slave boy named Benjamin. His value? $450. She was also given a girl named Nancy, who was valued at $450 as well. A girl named Mary valued only at $235 and a boy named Nathan at $600. Now, Jano Davis and Alice, his wife, were given a boy named Bob. He was valued at $600. We don't know how old Bob was. Yaz Robinette uh, Robinette was given a boy named Tom, valued at $600. George Robinette was given a boy named Charles, valued at $350. And a boy named Solomon, valued at $250. Well, we don't know. Maybe they were really old, or maybe they were hmm, crippled and therefore really not worth that much as people. Moses J. Robinette was given a boy named Joshua, valued at $600. Eliza Ann Robinette was given a boy named Pedro, uh, Pero, valued at $300, and a girl named Lynn, valued at $200. This news is all available right now with all of the documentations at glenbeck.com. Again, we've left the name of the company that did all of this work. We've left it off for their safety. But, boy, that would have to be from the right, and that wouldn't make sense. Why would the right be violent over something like this? You would think the right would like it. (laughs) Because we know the left isn't violent. We know if the left... uh, finds out that Joe Robinette Biden's ancestors all owned slaves and then passed them on generation after generation, (laughs) almost until the time of the Civil War where they were forced to get rid of their slaves. Wow, that is weird, isn't it? I told you you would enjoy it. You and I both don't think this has anything to do with who Joe Biden is today. But it's going to be fun watching how this information never sees the light of day. Except for when you retweet it. When you go to glenbeck.com and get the information and you put it on your Facebook, you put it on your Instagram, you put it on, you put it on Twitter. It'll be interesting to see if it trends. Hashtag Biden slave owners.